me just start, Liz, by making sure that um, this is a, a very diverse audience. So maybe you could catch up everyone with with the science, the reason that you won the Nobel Prize. Help us understand what a, a, a telomere or telomerase is. Yes. The, the prize was given for very basic fundamental research into, into how cells work. You know, cells are in all of our bodies. They make up our bodies. And we try and dig deep into them and try and understand what makes them tick. And what is very important in cells is the genetic information carried in chromosomes. And chromosomes, if you remember from pictures in textbooks, are linear. They have long linear DNA molecule running from end to end of the chromosome. And the linear chromosomal DNA ends are very, uh, are very uh, in, in jeopardy all the time. They're, they're susceptible to fraying away. It's a little bit like, I like this analogy, it's a little bit like a, you had a shoelace and the shoelace ends are susceptible to fraying away. And there are little things at the end of shoelaces, you notice, like little plastic tips or little metal tips. They're called aglets, and they protect the ends of the shoelaces. And so the telomeres are just like the protective tips at the end of your shoelace, where your shoelace would be the analogy for the uh, chromosome, which carries all the genes. So we have lots of chromosomes. We have lots of these uh, you know, linear chromosomes, all very important, each and every one is very important for carrying genetic information. So they all have to be protected. And this protection at the ends of the chromosomes is called the telomeres, little telomere, one at each end. Now, telomeres wear down just in natural processes. They wear down over time as we, you know, replenish ourselves. They, they, they tend to wear down. Now, if they kept wearing down, you know, there'd be nothing left, right? <laughs> the shoelace would get shorter and shorter and fray away completely. It doesn't happen. And what we discovered was an enzyme uh, which we named telomerase because it didn't exist in any dictionary and in any textbook. And telomerase, so telomere and then ase to sort of imply it was an enzyme. And what it does is it adds DNA back to the ends of the chromosomes. It replenishes the ends. It builds back those ends as they wear down and start to fray away. Telomerase builds them back up. That's really important for our continued good health. There has to, it has to be um, sufficient building back of telomeres. And if it doesn't happen properly, if they wear down too much, we're now understanding this makes people susceptible to some very, very common diseases. And how this works is a fascinating question because it now starts to ask questions about the whole body instead of asking about um, what's going on deep inside cells. So Liz, one of the things that I think is, is interesting um, for if you're a student or, or if you're chancellor is how does yes. one ascend to win a Nobel Prize? And at least in my mind, and maybe some of yours, I have this sense of a linear progression where each year life got better for you and you just ascended <laughs> oh. to the throne. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Since I guess that I'm wrong on that, maybe you could help us understand that path that I'm guessing might be a little more ups and downs could you tell us a little bit about some of the best days in the lab and maybe yes, some of the worst yes. days in yeah. the lab? No, no, it's a very, very perceptive question because when you, you, it's sort of like when people write scientific papers. They write it up as though we did this, 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 this and this. Well, you know, lots of things went wrong. It wasn't you the know, order. Eureka. And then you had Eureka <laughs> and it was all so logical. It didn't happen that way at all in most scientific papers. But in order to convey the sense of the story of the science, they're written that way. But, you know, it doesn't happen that way. So similarly, as, as you quite rightly said, uh, you know, there were definitely stages when, um, you know, I didn't get much in enthusiasm from, you know, my uh, sort of, you know, people in the social group I was in, you know, as I was growing up. Not my parents. They were fine. They 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 were fine with the idea that I would go into you know, study and so forth. But um, you know, it wasn't really a, a very kind of cool thing to do to want to do science. Um, one of the more interesting collaborations that you've had recently is to start to look about the role of telomeres or telomerase in stress. Yes, yes. I actually have two questions. One is, can you tell us what you learned in that research about stress? Yes, yes. And second, speaking of stress, yes. you mentioned Nepal and taking breaks. It, yes. It's hard work doing science. So both either informed by your own scientific uh, work or, or just your own success, 
Can you give some advice to all of us about yes. both what you've learned about stress and yes. how you personally manage stress? Yes, yes. Should I do the personally manage one because it's what very easy? With that? I, I really think I think you should. You know, it's such a cliche, but work hard, play hard. You know, it really, really I think is important. And so, you know, there's this idea that you sometimes hear about. Oh well, everything should be balanced, and that sounds very, very dull. I think if you really <laughs> like something, <laughs> and I understand family and and career balances, and and I don't think that's dull. I'm actually serious. I think it can be over many years that the balance can be achieved, but not every single day necessarily. I think things come, you know, and you do them very intensely. So I think having intense relaxation is is really important. You know, be it going away for a few weeks, or be it you know some something or other where your mind can do something different, and and that's worked. You know, in my personal case, the sort of going into a different space. Uh, whether it's geographical or something like that, or you know something like that, where you just turn your mind off. I think you, we have to do that to stay to really creative. take a break. You really take a break, yes, but really be cre- to keep our creative sort of energies going. 